Welcome back to the IB Investor Channel. In this video, we'll cover NIB in Australia and its most recent quarter, which is the Q3 report for 2023. We'll cover the share price development, the sales and profitability, the cash flows, and much more in this video. Now for the share price, and we can see that this stock has taken quite a beating here if we look at the short term here. But looking at the long term, we can see that the stock has done very well for itself here for the long period. So for the maximum period here, we can see a share development here of 22,000%. And this does not include dividends reinvested. So with dividends reinvested, it will be much more. Now for the short term here, we can see that the stock in a one year has declined by more than 34% here. And this is total return here on the right side that includes the dividends reinvested here. So bear that in mind when looking at these numbers. However, for the three year period here, we can see a 15.4% for the five year, an impressive 207%. And for the 10 year period here, a 767% with dividends reinvested again here. So, however, for the short term, we can see as well that the stock is down about 54% from its all time high. So quite a decline from this company. But as you'll see later in this video, this company has been pretty high or overvalued in my opinion, um, but has come down to much better prices right now. And we can also see that there's a lot of shareholders owning this stock. So in Sweden at my broker here, about 107,000 investors right now. But we can see here, however, that almost 5% or more than 5% uh, here have shorted the stock. So it's quite a heavily shorted stock that could be good to know. Now for the income statement of this company, we can see here in blue, the net sales here has been growing very nicely here year over year with no gaps or no nothing. It's just been growing, which is very good to see. We can also see that the EPS here in orange has been growing nicely year over year. Nothing much to say here. And if we look at the gross margin here in green, it currently sits at a 33.5%, uh, but it has been higher here in the past. So in the past it's been 36.1%. So quite low gross margins, I would say for an industry company. Uh, I've seen, you know, niche businesses that sits at, you know, 40% plus. So, you know, this could paint a picture that, uh, Perhaps they're, you know, it could be a competitive advantage here that they're not pushing the gross margins here, but rather want to sell the volumes. But it could also be the case that perhaps there is a lot of competition that uh, they have been, you know, pressured or have been pressured on the margin here for the gross margin here. So not the highest in, in uh, the industry companies that I've seen, but uh, not the lowest, certainly not either. However, for the uh, profit margin here, it's 11.1% for the rolling 12 months, which is pretty good. And uh, uh, it has been at that level here, as we can see for quite some years in the most recent time. However, in the most recent quarter, in the Q3 quarter alone, the uh, profit margin was 10.6%. So a little bit lower here compared to the rolling 12 months, but uh, still nothing alarming, I would say right now. Now for the share count history here of this company, and we can see that in the past there has been dilution here, so not very good to see. However, in the most recent time here, for the past, you know, three or four or five years, actually, there hasn't been any share dilutions at all here for the shareholders in terms of millions of shares, at least. So no effect here at all, I would say, which is pretty good to see. And we have to bear in mind as well that even though perhaps we want management to, you know, buy back shares and decline these numbers over time, we have to bear in mind that this company has been pretty overvalued here for, for this period, at least as we'll see later on in the video. So management has done a pretty good job here, not buying back shares when the stock was overvalued. Looking at the free cash flow situation here. So for the company, so the margin here has been negative 19%, which is not very good. It doesn't really have a good track record here of having the you know free cash flow margin positive. So that's something that shareholders has to bear in mind that the free cash flow margin has been pretty volatile over times. And we can also see here the same picture here per share where we can see that it's been negative here for the past two years. And it's also been negative here in, in um, 
in some earlier years here, but uh, the company has been able to produce some positive free cash flows here in the past. But I think the only thing that I will take with me with this company is that it's just been volatile up and down. So it's kind of difficult to value this company in terms of, you know, free cash flow. So it's just good to know that it's been a bumpy ride here, as we can see. Now for the cash flow overview, and we can see the cash from operations here in blue growing pretty nicely over time. And we can see that they produced a all time high 5 billion here in 2020. But ever since it's been on decline, which is not good to see. And we can also see here that the investing side has picked up. So this worries me a little bit because this is a pretty big bar here that we can see for the orange here, which is the investing part of the business. So I think they made a lot of uh, a lot of acquisitions here as of late. And as you can see, as a consequence, the free cash flow has been affected straight away here. So posting a negative 8.9 billion uh, Swedish kroners here in free cash flow. And management also said that they're tying up much more work in capital right now. Uh, and it was primarily due to stock building of components and materials that were ordered to protect the company against supply problems. So, you know, that's a potential here that uh, management could unlock here going forwards that uh, they would free up this working capital going forwards. But, you know, investors has to pay attention to this number going forwards because I think the the cash from operations here is quite low. I mean, we have to go back to, you know, somewhere between 2018, 2019 levels, you know, to get back to this number. So the cash from operations has to increase here going forwards. And I think that's something investors should pay attention to. Now for the net debt versus cash from operations, and we can see here this big, big net debt uh, acquisition here that they made. So they have acquired a lot of debt here. So from 2022 up until the most recent quarter here, trailing 12 months mind you uh, we can see here that the net debt that the company has acquired has increased massively here so almost almost three times as much here compared to that of 2022 and we can also see here that the cash flows has been lacking here so you know they have to drive the the cash from operations here much higher and have to make sure that this gap here that has been increasing here from 2022 it must decline here in the coming quarters and coming years because otherwise this is quite worrisome. So, you know, they are saying that they're investing for the future here, but the net debt right now is kind of alarming, I would say, and something that investors should pay attention to here. Now for net debt to EBTA, and we can see here over time that the number has been declining. So we can see that the number were actually the number here for 2014 uh, sat at 3.3 times, which was pretty high, actually, I would say. But ever since, they have been able to decline or reduce that number here. So the lowest here was 0.88 here in 2022. But now, as we saw here, they acquired a lot of net debt. We can see now that the number here, the multiple has increased now to two times. So it's still not a lot. It's you know, the, the 2.0 multiple in itself is not dangerous, but if this keeps on going up in the future, in the coming quarters, then, you know, investors should be alarmed. But right now, it's not the highest I've seen. So, you know, investors perhaps should not be alarmed by this 2x multiple by itself, but it's just something to pay attention to going forwards. Now for the enterprise value to EBIT. So this is the first valuation multiple that we'll look at. So... The company currently has a 21.2 times here, so it's certainly not a cheap company, but compare that to the number in 2022 where the company had a multiple here at almost 44 times. This number here that it currently trades at is, of course, a much better value proposition today compared to that of, you know, the past few years here where the number were just crazy. You know, this company's stock or share price outgrew everything and we can see it here so this number here is much better you know and we can also see that it's pretty much in line with what it's been at at historical levels here so before the pandemic years here we can see that the company did trade at a similar multiple here so right now it's much in line with the historical levels here which is good to see now for management's uh, allocations performance here, and we can see that the return on invested capital here on the left side has been pretty low, I would say. It's not super high. So, 
you know they currently have a 10 percent here for the most recent quarter trailing 12 months and you know it's it's been a little bit uh, higher in the past sorry the past few years but it's actually been much lower here in in the early years here so a 10 percent is still a pretty good reference number compared to that of uh, many years ago but for the most recent years here it's actually a lower number and then for the return on equity it's a pretty solid 16.3 percent so it's not super good but it's not super bad and it's just in line with you know the past historical levels here for uh, you know 2020 2021 and so on so nothing really to say here more than you know it's pretty much in line where uh, it's been at for a few years here now for the dividend point of view here so on the left side we have the dividend yield and we can see that the company or rather the the stock price here offers a one percent yield here currently which is much higher that of you know 2022 2021 and 2020 so a much better proposition today and we can also see here for the historical levels that you know the yield of this company has not really been that high either at uh, even at historical levels and just as a comparison here they're paying out a little bit less here of the free cash flow right now at 25.3 percent here for the dividend that they paid out for from fiscal 2022 uh, compared to you know the dividend that they paid out here in 2014 so you know the dividend is a little bit low in terms of yield but we can see here on the right side that the dividend is a fast growing one so you know over time this company has increased the dividend quite good and uh, the growth you know of the company looks like they're on the path to be able to increase it further here for the coming years as it looks right now so a pretty stable dividend paying stock and we can also see here for the 20 the fiscal year 2019 that they actually did pay out a dividend here during 2020 which was the COVID year so that's of course a very good sign that uh, the board has a lot of confidence in the balance sheet of this company and they were able to you know grow the dividend even during harsh and tough times here as many other company actually halted their dividends here during this period so pretty nice to see and of course it just puts an extra star here for sustainable uh, dividend growth here now the CEO remark here and the guy is telling us here that uh, he's ready to pounce here on some new acquisitions here so he's trying here to be proactive here which is which we've also seen here that this company has made some acquisitions here for uh, uh, during this year so far he's also telling us here that they have three business units which have very good geographical spread so you know he thinks that the company is not that uh, vulnerable to uh, local uh, downturns in terms of demand which is pretty good um, also a decentralized organization which is a very Swedish thing to do so basically independent units here where you know the local management has a lot of um, responsibility and this guy here the CEO is uh, probably asking the management here the local management to take a lot of responsibility as well and not decide what they should do but rather you know have their own responsibility to drive profits and so on further he's also telling us here that the pandemic effects are continuing to fade which is a very significant uh, positive factor so basically during the COVID years here they probably had some issues with the supply chains if I don't remember incorrectly and it looks like uh, this is fading away but he also mentioned here during you know the quarter that they did tie up a lot of working capital so I think that he's probably feeling a little bit more confident here going forwards to release that uh, stock buildup that they had uh, and yeah I think there there wasn't so much else I would say in this quarter that I thought was interesting but uh, the only thing that uh, was mentioned during the call was that you know the next next few quarters I, I believe you know we're probably going to be much in line with what it was right now so we're not going to see this you know 30 percent increase in net sales or for you know 40 percent or something like this so it's he's downplaying it a little bit but we have to bear in mind as well that there are going to be some acquisitions coming into the company as well with numbers being reported probably in the coming uh, coming quarters here so he's probably offsetting a lot of that decline in sales with you know acquired net sales here so I think the figures probably will look pretty good as well going forwards regardless but it's going to be interesting to see at least but very nice numbers for this company still 
Uh, the only negative stuff that I really saw was the, was the net debt here increasing quite a lot, and um, also the cash flows here being tied up in terms of you know uh, stock build up here that they have to release here going forwards. Otherwise, very nice business in general, and the valuations has also come down quite a lot here as of late. All right, this was it for this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you liked the video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.